Hi. We continue with the philosophy of language. Uh, we have looked at Frege's theory of meaning and his distinction between sense and reference. And uh, if you remember, Frege insisted on senses being objective. Um, so his idea was that every competent language user will attribute the same senses with the proper names used in... That's what allows communication to be possible because we use the same senses. So what we're going to look at today is a theory of meaning that is very different. Um, one that is proposed by a philosopher called Paul Grice. And in order to see, to get into uh, Grice's theory of meaning, let's remind ourselves of this distinction, the distinction between semantics and pragmatics. Semantic deals with the non-contextual meanings um, of sense and types. And so Frege obviously provides a semantics because he's not interested in context. Because he insists on the objectivity of senses, senses he's interested in context-free, that is, non-contextual meaning. Pragmatics, however, is the study of the aspect of meaning that is dependent on the context, where this context can be the speaker or the addressee or other features like, you know, the gesture by which uh, that is accompanied, that accompanies an utterance or whatever. Um, so the study of context-free meaning is uh, semantics, whereas the study of context-dependent meaning is pragmatics. Now, we are all familiar with context-dependent meaning. I'll give you a few examples here. Take indeterminate, indeterminate meaning. Suppose you walk along the beach and you find a uh, bottle, um, message in a bottle that says, help me get off this island. Now you understand what the sentence means. There is someone called, well, actually you don't get the name. There's someone who apparently is on an island and would like to leave the island. So that you can gather just by reading and understanding the terms used in the message. But of course you don't fully understand the message. You don't know who has written this. You don't know why they want to get off the, the island. You don't know which island they want, would like to leave. None of that you understand just by understanding the sentence. So you don't really get the context. Uh, had you been present when this message was written, you would probably be familiar with the context and you would have a full understanding. Now, contextual meaning is not only, um, or uh, understanding the context is not only needed for understanding the deeper meaning of, a, of an utterance, it's also sometimes the primary meaning, that the primary meaning of an utterance is contextually dependent. Take irony. Um, if you, you open a reference letter, and the first sentence says that Jones, the person on whose behalf the le reference letter is written, that Jones has beautiful handwriting. Now, in most contexts, you would think that what this sentence means is actually quite different from what it says literally. You would understand that what the speaker, or in this case, the... the um, the author of the sentence meant was something like that the person, Jones, is not very good academically, is academically weak. So we automatically interpret such a statement in a way that takes the context into consideration. Take other examples. Hinting is another a uh, good case where the context plays an important role in understanding an utterance. Suppose I'm annoyed by your presence and tell you, there's the door. Now what I mean by this is that you should leave the room, but that's not what I said. But the context, the fact that I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed, the fact that I'm pointing at the door when I say there is the door, the context makes it clear that what I mean is different from what the words literally mean 
uh, liter yeah, literally mean that I've used. Another example is hint of hinting is a duke and his butler are together in one of the duke's uh, castle's uh, rooms, and the duke says to the butler, it's rather cold for April. And the butler instantly understands what the duke means by this statement, closes the door, uh, closes the window, and um, starts a fire in the fireplace. Or two thieves at night in a warehouse. They hear a siren in the distance, and one thief turns to the other and says, that's not an ambulance. So they leave in a hurry. Why do they leave in a hurry? Because the other thief instantly understands that in this very context, the statement, this is not an ambulance, means not only that it is not an ambulance, what it really means is it's the police, so they leave. So very often we have to take the context into consideration to fully understand or to properly understand the meaning of an utterance. And it is this meaning that the author that we are looking at today, Paul Grice, is interested in. So Paul Grice was a British philosopher who worked in England for a long, long time, but then towards the end of his career moved to UC Berkeley, and uh, he has done seminal work on pragmatics, that is, on the context-dependent meaning. In particular, uh, the, the context that uh, Paul Grice thinks plays a crucial role in determining meaning is the intention of the speaker. Speakers' intentions are what, de what uh, determine meaning, what determine the meaning of the utterances that the speaker makes. That's Paul Grice's position. Um, so he thinks that the meaning of an utterance should be ex explicated in terms of the reaction that the speaker intends to produce in the hearer. So the speaker says something and he says it with the intention of the hearer forming a certain belief. And it is this intention to form a certain belief in the hearer. It's this intention that determines the meaning of the utterance. That is Grice's um, the, the core idea, the core idea of Grice's semantics, or I should rather say it's the core idea of Grice's pragmatics. Now, what are intentions? I said Grice thinks that meaning is primarily determined by the intentions that the speaker has concerning beliefs that the hearer should form on the basis of what the speaker says. What are intentions? Intentions are states of minds, and um, other states of minds are, for example, beliefs, judgments, hopes, desires, and fears. So intentions are like that. Intentions play a distinctive role in actions. Why? Well, be because intentions are um, give actions a certain purpose. Um, they give actions a certain purpose. Um, maybe um, I'll, I'll move to the next slide and then come back to this one. So doing something intentionally is, for example, contrasted with doing something accidentally or by mistake or in ignorance. Intentionally, to do something intentionally means to do something purposefully. And if you do something purpose, purposefully, you haven't done it accidentally or by mistake or in ignorance. So doing something intentionally is similar to meaning to do it, because that's what it means to do it purposefully. That is, it, 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 uh, it requires deliberation or doing something deliberately or consciously. So whatever you do intentionally, you're aware of doing. Um, Doing something intentionally does not require doing it voluntarily. You don't have to want to do it in order to do it intentionally. All that is required for you to do something intentionally is that you have a reason for doing it and you, 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 you have a certain goal in mind. Now the, the goal that you have in mind 
may be irrational. It may not be satis. It may be impossible in principle to satisfy or to reach that goal. So you can have irrational intentions. That's possible. It's also possible to do something intentionally and not like the consequences of one's action. Um, that's actually very often the case, and in part this is the case because we have only limited control over the consequences of our actions. So intentionality or intentions, and here I come back now to the previous slide, ought to be distinguished from two other terms that sound the same. So intentions is the term I've been talking about, and they are um, particular states of mind. There's another term that philosophers like to use, and that is intentionality. Intentionality is the power of the mind to be about something, to represent something, to stand in for things, uh, or for properties or objects. So intentionality and intentions are not the same thing. Intentionality is the ability to represent something. Intentions are the states of minds by which we have goals in mind that we try to achieve or reach. And then there's a third term that sounds very similar. The spelling is a little, little different. Um, and that means something entirely different. That's intention, intention with an S, sorry, intention with an S. Intention with an S means what Frege calls a sense. So intentions spelled with an S is basically Frig, our Fregean senses. So these three terms, intention, intentionality, and intention spelled with an S instead of a T, need to be um, distinguished, need to be kept apart. We are going to be uh, focusing only on intentions, the first of those three terms, because that's the one that plays a major role for crisis theory.